Hey everybody, Steven here, and today I have a video just on some various groin stretches that I personally do in my own practice and that I do with clients. Um, a lot of people are tight just on that inside part of their leg running up into the groin. Their adductor right here is really, really tight. And because of that, we're getting a lot of pull where the knee is actually tracking in. So as you walk in your gait pattern, right, that knee might pull in or it's causing like outside hip tightness, right? Because it's pulling all of that in like that. So it's just a common problem that I ultimately end up seeing. So most people end up doing a butterfly stretch, right? They do just this standard and they're here. I'm gonna cover some different stretches that I do. Um, I'm gonna link to a um, video series that I did where you actually sit in a chair. So it's like a desk stretching series that I do so that you can sh uh, see if you're at work, what are some things that you can do? Cause I'm not gonna incorporate one that I do a lot that is actually in the chair for this video, but it is in that desk stretching series video that I have. So we'll actually just start with this regular butterfly kind of stretch position. Now when I'm here, one of the things that ends up happening is as I'm here and I'll push down for that stretch and I'll kind of come really spry, I'll come up in this position like this to get in there. It's decent, but a lot of times what I'm having trouble with is even if I push down like this, I can't quite leverage into a very, very effective stretch. So what I'll do is I'll put my hands back behind me like this, and I'm actually going to prop my body up, and then I'm going to walk my body in so that you can see I'm actually leveraging this and I'm moving in further. So I'm bringing my hips or my groin closer to my feet. I'll hold that for a little bit, and then I can move back. I'll actually hold about 10-ish seconds, maybe five to 10. And don't hold it long, because a lot of times people are gonna be like, well, I can't hold my body up that long or something like that. I'm not doing it for long periods of time for this one, just because I am holding my body up. I don't wanna create a ton of tension in my neck because maybe uh, holding that position for 30 seconds to a minute just is gonna wear too much on my shoulders. So I'm not trying to create tension somewhere else so that I end up getting a headache because I'm holding this up and my traps get tired and now I need to go do work on that. So we're doing those shorter periods of time moving in. I usually want my feet maybe not planted all the way together but pretty close together, right? So right here, my you can't maybe see it but my heels, if I push my heels together I do get a better stretch through that but I'm not super concerned with that as long as somewhere with my feet I have contact there. So that's the first stretch. The next one. I'm going to use the foam roller here. Um, I also use a medicine ball for this because I'll sit on the medicine ball and one of the big medicine balls. I'll sit on that as well. As long as you have something that you can prop yourself up with, uh, you can do most of what I'm going to show you. The only thing that you can't really do with this is going to be the rolling technique because let's say that was difficult right there and you're like, eh, I'm holding myself up. I could sit on this and I can essentially roll myself, right? Because it's gonna roll, I can roll forward, get into that position, and then I can actually push out. I use my forearms, but I'll push out in this position. And I can even lean forward. As I lean forward and I bow into that, I wanna make sure that I do have a neutral spine, I'm not rounding a lot. And as I do that right there, I'm gonna get a deep stretch in there. And in this position, I can actually hold this a lot longer, okay? So we have that one, but like I said, the benefit here being that I can actually roll into the position. Just that roll for some people, getting that might be enough for right now. You wanna make sure that you scale all of this to the level that you're at and make small micro improvements over time. That's gonna stack and that's gonna get you where you wanna go, okay? So we have that right there. Another one that I really, really like to do is I'll prop my leg in and I'll draw one leg out there was a line going this way. I want to get this leg back as close to that line as possible. As I'm here, I'm going to push out on this knee. Okay, so I'm driving out here on this left knee, and I'm going to reach out like that. And what I'm going to get here as I do that is I'm not only going to get this hamstring stretched through here, but because I'm pushing out, I'm actually going to get not only through this adductor, it's gonna run into my groin and it's gonna come into this groin and then it's gonna go through that hamstring. So I'm kind of covering a lot of different stuff here and I'm reaching out from my body like this. Just like that, I'll hold and then I'll switch sides, right? Here 
And what you might notice, like my left side is my treble side, the adductor over there and that groin area is a lot tighter on this side. Getting closer to this line is more difficult for me, right? So I usually try to spend a little bit more time on this side when I'm doing it. And we'll hold, like I said, in this one, maybe 15 to 20 seconds on this. I'm not gonna hold for a super duper long period of time. Some of these static stretching movements, um, because they are a little bit more intense, I'm not gonna hold as long. One of the ones at the very end that we're gonna do though, it would be considered more of a resting period that I would actually hang out in that position for a while. If something starts to hurt though, you need to get out of it, right? Um, one of my mentors, that, uh, he has a saying that I love, he says, get off at your bus stop, right? Don't try and push further, right? If you're not there yet, get off at the appropriate spot that you need to get off at so that you don't hurt yourself, okay? So we have those right there. Like I said, you can use the foam roller for that, but if you don't have that, a medicine ball, something that you can prop yourself up on works really, really well for that. The next one that we're gonna do is a frog stretch. Uh, it's this, It has other names, that's what I call it. And what you're gonna do for this is and I'll show you from the front and then from the side, is I'm gonna come out here, I'm gonna draw my legs, my knees out like this, as far as I can comfortably get them. Once I'm here, and I'm kind of stacking my hands underneath the shoulders here, I don't wanna be out wide like that. I wanna be neutral with my, my head and my spine so I'm not kinked. I have a 90 degree angle here, down to my knee with my thigh, and then from my knee down to my ankle is 90, and then I usually point my toes 90. So a lot of different 90 degree angles here. 90, 90, and then 90 down there. Once I'm here, deep breath in, I'm gonna load my hips back as far as I can. I'll hold that five to 10 seconds, and then I'll unload from that, right? Now with this, I'm gonna do my diaphragmatic breathing, which is the belly breath, right? Deep breath into my stomach through my nose. Hold that and then load down. And then exhale through like that, okay? I'm gonna cover a couple different points with this. One, the diaphragmatic breathing is giving internal support for my lower back. In this position, your lower back is gonna have some pressure on it, but it might be compromised if I'm not getting that internal support for that, right? The, the core, the midsection here is a cylinder. We want internal support for that lower back as you do this. And I'm gonna show you this from the side also in that the other thing that can happen with this that I wanna monitor, okay, is that as I go here, people have a tendency to like tuck their pelvis. So that they'll actually tuck in like this and then still try to push back. I wanna keep that as flat neutral as I can as I drive back and down and then pull out that's not far enough there we go so deep breath keep that pelvis neutral drive back and then come out of it right and I'll just go here if I go down and I tuck my pelvis like that we're gonna load the lower back more than we want right we're stretching some of those muscles out just a little bit too much we want to maintain neutral in that and we don't want to go the other way when people kind of go into like this lower doses where they're arching their back and trying to load down like that like i said very much neutral one of the things that you can do to help that place a small book on that back if i'm arching too much right you're going to feel that that contact goes away and you'll only have two points of contact if i round too much you'll feel that this wants to slide off your back so that's something you, that you can do with that one more thing so, to kind of point out with that movement. I've been propping myself up with my hands, right? I've, I've been here and loading down. But that puts me at a higher angle. A lot of times I'll actually drop down onto my forearms. So as I'm here, i make sure that's lined up. I'll actually come down here like this. This position is more intense. So this would be a scale. Some people are here. If I load down, it's gonna be more intense and I can actually drive down into that position and with that drive, right? And I'll show you from the side here too, as I'm here. So now that I'm down here, as I drive back, this ultimately is where you're gonna see a lot of that pelvic tucking or lower dose is happening versus trying to stay as neutral as I can to 
push down into it, right? That would be that scale within the movement, but keep in mind, as you do that, you need to be very, very mindful, more so in that position, down on the forearms, of what your pelvis is doing so that you're not tucking it or overarching your lower back, all right? So frog stretch, I really, really like this one. This is one um, I usually tell clients to place a lot of emphasis on um, with their stretching routine because you're getting a lot in terms of being able to actually like load back. It's one of those good movements too to do before you do heavy squats, all right? Now, I wanna cover this really, really quick too. Um, this is something that I'll do is, because these last two are more like resting positions that you could do. So we're talking extended periods of time that you might hang out in this position. One is, as I lie on my back, I can actually put my feet together and I can hang out, if I'm here, in that butterfly stretch position. Now, as I'm hanging in here, I wanna keep in mind, I want neutral spine with my lower back. I don't want a huge arch and I don't want to tuck my pelvis in. Just nice flat, right? Here, and I can hang out in this position for a couple minutes. Now, going back to getting off at your own bus stop, if that is too intense, what I do, and this is what I had to do initially, and if I'm gonna do it for a long, long period of time, I'll do it, I'll bolster my legs up with pillows. I'll put pillows underneath my legs out here so that they rest on there so it's not the full weight being pulled down. I lessen that a little bit because for me it's really just getting to the position, getting a light stretch, not an, in an intense static stretch or an assisted stretch, just hanging out in that position for an extended period of time. Starting out with 30 seconds to, to a minute, then maybe moving forward to a couple minutes. I mean, five minutes tops is what I would say you're gonna do at most, because at that point, your body's gonna potentially start to resist that. Right now, I'll hang out in it about two to three minutes at most, and then I usually, I'll actually end up flapping my thighs, so what I'll do is I'll like go like this to like, just get some movement there, right? Because the body wants to avoid static positions, right? And then I'll go back to it, okay? And I usually do that in bed. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a nice spot to do that. Um, and I can, if I need the assistance, I can just put some pillows under my legs really, really quick or some blankets or something like that. Now, last one that we're gonna finish with, I'm actually going to show you is up against the wall. Um, this is one that I see Kelly Starr do a lot um, that I really, really like. And there's this variation and then there's a variation that Katie Bowman does. And we'll kind of cover both. It's gonna be a little bit harder with my wall because it's not completely flat with this. Um, but I'll show you both of these and I'll show you the easier one first, which is the version that Kelly Starr does. You're just gonna see the top down view with this. Um, the one thing that I want you to look for that you won't see in this video is the fact that my spine should be neutral. So if I'm here and my legs are gonna be propped up against the wall essentially like this, I don't want my lower back arched. If I'm arched like that, it's no good. And if I'm tucking my pelvis a ton, it's no good. Just neutral, just flat, okay? If you're having difficulty finding what that is when you get in the position, go to either extreme and then find the middle, right? Tuck my pelvis as much as I can, arch it as much as I can, and then kind of come right in between so that my back is flat, my spine is stacked how it should be, right? So for the first one, what you're gonna do, you're gonna suit close to the wall, I'm gonna get right here, and I'm gonna put my feet out wide, okay? Like this, I'm gonna make sure that my knee tracks to the middle of my foot as close as I can get it, right? So I don't wanna be like this where my foot's off, my knee's shooting that way, my foot's shooting that way. I want them pretty close, right? And then once I'm here, making sure that my spine is in a neutral position, I'm going to rest my arms right here and I'm just gonna hang out and I'm gonna kinda of lightly push down. We're just gonna hang out here. Keeping in mind that I don't want my foot to rock off, I want my foot flat. If I want a little bit more, I can actually push really, really hard to stretch out. And I'll go through cycles. I'll go resting, just hanging out here. And I might do that 20, 30 seconds. 
I'll press for five seconds, and then I'll go back to resting. If I need to alleviate that, I'll pull my arms off, and I'll move the legs around a little bit, right? And then I'll come right back to hanging out, okay? So that's the first one. And you can slowly change where you are. That wasn't the most extreme point that I usually go to. Usually I end up going kind of out here and then pushing more, right? You might be up here just trying to push here because your, your groin is that tight. Figure out where you're at, okay? And then the next one, and I'm going to have to scoot down for this one. The next one's a little bit different because with this one, I actually want, get this board out of the way, I actually want my back completely flat to the wall, which is hard for some people to do. Easiest way is I scoot sideways and then I turn up and then I slowly come down like this. Once I'm here, hands out to my side or flat. Let's a little bit. And what I do with this, and this is Katie Bowman stuff, this is restorative exercise um, modality stuff is once I'm here, I'm gonna take a deep breath into my belly. I'm gonna exhale, and I'm gonna just let my legs naturally drop out as far as they can go, okay? And then once I'm here, I'm stretching the groin and the adductor. Now she has a really, really cool thing that she does though once she's here, is we'll do activation and relaxation techniques. So once we're here, we'll flex the feet, point them down, we'll flex them back really, really tight for three seconds, we might do that twice, we'll flex them again, we'll pull them back, and then we'll take a deep breath in, and we'll exhale, and we'll move our feet a little bit further. You'll see this technique with a lot of different physical therapists or chiropractors where they do activation and then relaxation, right? You might do that with a hamstring stretch, where you're stretching your hamstring and they're holding your leg up and they'll tell you to push your hamstring down, right? You'll try and kick your foot down as you do that, right? They're gonna give you resistance. They count one, two, three. You take a deep breath in, you exhale, and then they push your leg back further because after activation, right? Me activating, pointing my feet, pulling them back really, 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 really tight, activating them, pushing them down, pulling them back after that period, as I take a deep breath in and relax, right? After that activation, your body relaxes further, right? And now we can get out further in this position and we can hang out. I went through two passes. I'll usually do two to three. I'll find that spot where I'm like, okay, I'm pushing it. And then I'll hang out here for about 45 seconds to a minute. Sometimes you'll build up further and then this might turn into a two to three minute hanging out position, right? I'm not doing an extreme stretch. I'm doing a comfortable elongation, okay? I'm gonna bring my legs up. I'll usually turn them to my side, and then I can pull my body up like this. I want elongation of that muscle, right? I wanna hang out so that it's just in its elongated, stretched out state, but I'm not pushing the stretch, right? It's like a hamstring stretch where I hang out here and I elongate versus me slamming forward and trying to pull myself and trying to force the stretch, right? We just hang out in that position, right? And we started with some positions where we were on the uh, foam roller there where we were really pushing the stretch. These last two, these last couple, really more for hanging out a longer period of time, but just in a comfortable spot where your body adapts and elongates itself to that position comfortably, okay? So there's a handful of just groin stretches that I do. There are other ones that are out there, right? And I'm just gonna toss this out. There's this, right? There's a ton of different stuff where I'm here and I bow forward. There's an insane amount of different stretches that you can do that I didn't even cover in this. These just happen to be the handful that I personally use, not only with my clients, but with myself on a pretty regular basis. So hopefully that helps. If there's any other stretches or workouts or supplements that you want me to review, anything else like that that you guys want to see, um, let me know in the comments section. Um, that helps me to kind of program my week with what I'm going to cover. If I don't know what it is, I'm going to tell you I don't know what it is. And then I'm going to go do research for a while until I feel comfortable with then sharing the information that I've gained. 
Unfortunately, right now, there's just an insane amount of information that's being thrown out there. And um, a lot of people I ultimately see don't even know what the precursors to it are. They don't know the background to it. They're just throwing information out there to throw out information. Um, and, and there isn't the, the, the background to back up what they're talking about, or they're just trash talking on everybody else's stuff. So, um, like I said, if I don't know what it is, I'm gonna do research first before I just throw out content. I'm gonna make sure that I understand it fully before I spread my knowledge to you guys as well. So, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you want to follow along with all the different things that I cover. And like I said, hit me up. Let me know what you guys wanna see. Because like I said, it helps me to program my week and to make sure that I'm getting out the content that you guys actually want to see and hear. And that's going to help you along your fitness journey. So thanks for watching, guys.